I want you to imagine you were living in the 80s. No computers, no phones. If you wanted to hang out with a friend, you'd just go to their house and knock on their door. If you wanted to watch a film, you'd have to walk to the store and buy the VHS. And if you wanted to hear a song, you had to wait for it to come on the radio. Life was simpler then. Today, we live in a world where constant change and disruption is the norm. Just think about how much information we deal with day to day. News updates, social media, messages from friends, data from work, all of which we need to process and act upon. The environment is so dynamic and because of this, we need to make good decisions. The trouble is we're conditioned to a rush from one task to the next, never really having the chance to stop and think about the decisions we're making or why we're making them. Adding another layer of complexity is our human nature. We're emotional beings. We get angry, stressed, unhappy, and our emotions tend to guide our decision making. So how can we slow down our minds and think as clearly as possible? This is where mental models come into play. They can help us understand the world better and navigate life with more clarity and precision. They help us simplify complex realities and make better decisions, and they can help you to understand life. Life was something I didn't really understand at the beginning of my 20s. A combination of poor judgment and lack of decision-making skills led to far from ideal outcomes. I'll give you an example. In the UK, if you're a student at university, you're usually able to borrow money through a student loan, which covers your tuition fees and a maintenance loan, and that sort of helps to cover some of your living costs. I remember seeing the money arrive in my bank account and I was shocked. I had never seen money like that in my account before. And it would usually arrive in chunks every few months. And instead of building a emergency fund, seeking some financial advice or investing it, I literally spent it on whatever I wanted. If I wanted to eat, I'd just go to the restaurant around the corner rather than cook. If I wanted new clothes, I would just go to Oxford Circus and check out the shops there. And if I wanted to hang out with my mates, then we'd go to nice bars and clubs and spend money there. And over weeks and months, the balance would gradually get lower and lower, leaving me financially vulnerable. But I knew that in a few weeks time, I'd get the next bit of money and it'd be fun. Honestly, looking back, what was I doing? But if you think about it, there's a bigger problem. In school, we're taught to memorize facts, solve standard problems and regurgitate information for exams. And yeah, some skills you learn at school are useful, but they don't equip you with the tools needed to navigate the real world. You're never really taught how to make good decisions. And because of this, you'll often find yourself making decisions based on your emotions and what feels right at that time. That short-sightedness had meant that I missed out on early financial planning and compound interest. And it taught me a lot about the importance of strategic thinking and long-term planning. And that's where mental models come into play. They help you to understand the world better. And so today we're gonna to talk about the six models I use to help me think clearer and with more intent. The first model is the circle of competence. The IBM founder, Thomas Watson, once said, I'm not a genius, I'm smart in spots, but I stay around those spots. The idea behind this model is quite simple. The circle of competence emphasizes the importance of understanding your strengths and limitations, focusing on areas where you have deep knowledge and skills. As a doctor, my job is people facing, interacting with patients, understanding their needs and providing care are all within my circle of competence. This people centric skill set has been honed through years of medical training and work experience. Whether I'm explaining to a patient what their blood test means or I'm offering emotional support after breaking some bad news, my expertise lies in dealing with people effectively. It's quite a simple approach, but it can help people and businesses make better decisions by staying within their area of expertise while gradually expanding their knowledge base. You need to figure out where your edge is and play within that circle of competence. You have to work to expand the circle and broaden your knowledge over time. And to apply the model, you first need to identify your skills. Figure out what areas where you have good knowledge and expertise. For me, it's my ability to connect with people, build relationships and provide solutions. For you, it could be the same, or maybe you're a really creative person and you're good at music or design, or maybe you've got really good hands-on skills like carpentry, plumbing, DIY projects. Once you've found your skill set, focus on making decisions and taking actions within your competence zone, and then over time, broaden your circle by learning and gaining experience in different areas. A really good way to expand is to leverage expertise. So collaborate or hire experts outside of your circle of competence to make better decisions. 
The next mental model is second order thinking. It's a model that encourages thinking beyond the immediate outcomes of actions and decisions. You essentially anticipate the longer term consequences of your decisions and the ripple effects that those actions may cause. This type of thinking helps to avoid unintended consequences and leads to more informed strategic decision making. Pretty much everyone can anticipate the immediate results of their actions. Let's say you're hungry and you decide to grab McDonald's for dinner. You know what the outcome will be. It's quick, cheap, and it satisfies your hunger. But second order thinkers take a more deliberate approach. They ask themselves, and then what? Yes, McDonald's might quickly solve your hunger problem, but then you're consuming an unhealthy, processed and calorie dense meal. The essence of this model is to go beyond the first consequence of your decision and examine the subsequent effects. It encourages holistic thinking by making you consider the consequences of those initial results. And this deeper level of analysis can change your decision making process. Second order thinking requires discipline and foresight. And I think it's really important for making well-rounded decisions both in life and in business. It's about taking that extra step in your thought process, which can lead to more thoughtful and effective outcomes. So next time you make a decision, remember to ask yourself, and then what? That simple question can help you think more strategically and make better choices in the long run. The next mental model is inversion. This is probably one of the models I use the most. Instead of tackling a problem head on, you reverse the problem and work backwards. And by identifying what not to do, you can avoid pitfalls and focus on actions that lead to success. For example, if you're struggling with productivity, instead of asking, how can I be more productive? Ask yourself, how can I be as unproductive as possible? Okay, let's answer it. So if I was to have a really unproductive day, I'd wake up late, I'd eat a really sugary breakfast, I'd have my phone on my desk with the notifications on, I'd have the TV in the background on, and I'd make sure my desk is really cluttered as well. When you're having difficulty solving a problem, try to solve the opposite problem first. Let's use another example. Let's say you want to get serious and improve your physique. Rather than asking, how can I get a good physique? Ask yourself, how can I get a really bad physique? So to achieve a poor physique, I would eat junk food and takeaways all the time. I'd sit around all day. I wouldn't exercise or go to the gym. I wouldn't follow a training program and I wouldn't track my weight or my calories. By making a list of what not to do, you can just avoid those actions. And this model helps you to understand the problem and it can be a powerful motivator as well. So instead of starting at the beginning, start at the end, because by thinking about what not to do, you can see more clearly and do what you need to do to achieve your goals. It kind of forces a different perspective, which can be really powerful. The next mental model is opportunity cost. We live in a world of trade-offs. And doing one thing means not being able to do another. There's always a choice to make. Let's say you're deciding on further education and you think a career in medicine might be worthwhile. You consider the time it takes to become a consultant. At a minimum, it's 10 years, but usually it's more like 15 years, including medical school and postgraduate training. You also need to consider the cost of training, which will probably leave you in six figures worth of debt if you factor in student loans. And you have to factor in other things like earning potential, job satisfaction, stability, competition. The opportunity cost is foregone income from not working during the years of medical training. For instance, you could have done a shorter degree in finance, for example, and advanced in that field. Another thing to consider is personal time and lifestyle sacrifices due to the demanding nature of medical training and practice. A reason why this model is useful for strategic thinking is that it helps evaluate the true cost of decisions by considering what's sacrificed. It also ensures that your resources, so time, money and effort, are directed towards the most valuable and impactful things. And if you evaluate the trade-offs, you can make informed decisions that are aligned with your long-term goals because at the end of the day, you want to maximize your potential. For small decisions, it's not really worth applying this model, but as you become more successful and your time becomes more valuable, ideally you want to be spending your time doing the things that generate the most leverage. The next model is one you've probably heard of before, the Pareto Principle. The simplest way to define this principle is that the majority of outcomes in all aspects of life are unevenly distributed. Pareto was an Italian economist and he discovered that 20% of Italy's population owned 80% of the country's land. And this principle of uneven distribution applies to 
so many different areas of life and work. Essentially, it suggests that roughly 80% of effects come from 20% of causes. And applying this principle helps with prioritization by identifying the most impactful activities that yield the majority of the results. Imagine if you have a list of 10 tasks for the day, you look at each task one by one and assess them based on their impact. You figure out that completing two of the tasks will yield the highest return overall. And focusing on these two tasks enables you to achieve the most significant results. So how can you apply this principle in real life? The Pareto principle is pretty versatile. It lets you concentrate on the smallest percentage of inputs that generate the majority of the results. And it helps you to identify and prioritize tasks that offer the highest leverage. And it's a powerful tool for maximizing both your efficiency and productivity. And by focusing on less tasks that are more important, you can achieve more with less effort. It's about working smarter, not harder. The next mental model is via negativa. To attain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, subtract things every day. This mental model focuses on subtracting the things that negatively impact your life rather than adding something positive. I've discussed this at length in another video, which I'll link below. So instead of asking yourself, what can I add? Ask yourself, what can I subtract? In other words, it's often easier to improve your life by removing negative influences rather than adding positive ones. You can dramatically improve your life simply by removing things. Take the news, for example. You can significantly boost your happiness levels by not watching or reading any news. Improving your diet is another example. Rather than adding loads of healthy foods, you can just simply eat fewer unhealthy ones. And this approach helps you to focus on eliminating the, the negatives which makes space for more positive things. And this model is powerful because it simplifies decision-making and emphasizes reducing harm over increasing benefit. And it's about clearing away the clutter and the noise that hinder your progress. And by removing things that weigh you down, you can elevate your overall well-being and productivity. And applying this principle encourages a more straightforward path to improving, stripping away the unnecessary to reveal what truly matters. It's a minimalist approach that can lead to more profound and lasting changes in your life. So next time you want to improve something, ask yourself, what can I remove rather than what you can add? So yeah, life is complicated. We navigate through a world of constant change and intricate challenges. And if you observe reality through the lenses of these mental models and run scenarios through their frameworks, you can distill complex problems into more manageable chunks. Hopefully these models can help you see the world in a different way. I know they've helped me a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.